call the uh, regular Oxford Township meeting of um, December 22nd, 2022 to order. If we would all rise and give our respects to the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I thank everybody for that. Um, Susan, if you'll note the row, I guess we, we're starting with two absent uh, right now. So Yes, but there is a quorum. So. Okay. So I need a motion for approval on the agenda. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve, to approve tonight's agenda dated December 22nd, 2022. I have a motion for approval of the agenda for Mr. Noel. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, I heard two, but I got Ballard down there first. So Mr. Ballard, you're second yes. on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 I don't think there's any conflicts of interest with anybody on this uh, group in front of us tonight. If there is, please say so now. We don't have to recuse anybody. Okay, we don't. Uh, six, we have approval of the minutes from the regular Planning Commission meeting of 12-8-22. If I could have a motion for that. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes for the Planning Commission regular meeting dated 12-8-2022. I have a motion from Mr. Noel to approve those meeting minutes of 12-8-22. Do I have a second? I'll second that. And I have a second from Mr. Bailey. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, is there anyone in the public that would like to speak on anything that's not scheduled for tonight's public hearing or this agenda? We have a president here, so I didn't know. Yeah, I'm not familiar with the proceedings and, and okay. I'm not up to date, but I'm uh, uh, Stony Lake uh, Village Association. You're here to, to talk on the public hearing? No. I. For what we have on the agenda? No. Oh, no. Oh, well, you'd like to get up the podium and speak on another comment, on an issue? No, I was just wanted to, I came to find out what's going on at Market Street and Stony Lake Drive. Okay, we we can't talk about that right now at this meeting. It's not on the agenda, but I'd be happy, we could probably talk to you after the meeting. Okay. I, 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 mean, I, I can talk about it too in, in the planner. Yeah, okay. Notes. Yeah, sure. Thanks for coming in then. No, thank you. All right, uh, we have none from the uh, public at this time then on any issues. Do we have any commissioner's comments to date right now? Sure. Mr. Noel? I have a short one. Pete Schultz, thank you for your service to the community for a young 47 years. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and you enjoy your, your, your long, long, uh, uh, long retirement. Thank you. I think that's kudos really from everybody, Pete. Yes. Uh, I would like to respond that way too. So thank you so much. It's been great working with you. Thank you. We'll probably miss you too. Um, okay, uh, seeing that commissioner, uh, anybody else? I'm sorry, Mr. Turner, you? No. Mr. Bailey? No. Um, okay, we have no other commissioner's comments. We are now, in a, I need a motion to open the public hearing that we have in front of us tonight. Mr. Chair, I'd like to open the public hearing dated 12-8-2022 at 7.02. I have a motion from Mr. Noel. Do I have a second? I'll second that. So we have a second for the uh, uh, zoning ordinance text amendment, a public hearing this evening for the date of 12-22-22. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Now. I guess go. Yep, I'll do. I'll do my fast to be quick as possible. Okay. Um, but if anyone has questions for details, let me know. I just wanted to to set where we're at now. Uh, well, so he is, he is the person presenting. I'm, on behalf of the township. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. That, thanks for that. Can you yep. Clarify it. So uh, where we're at at the beginning of last year, the township identified a bunch of priority lists for zoning amendments and your ordinance review committee has been busy busy beavers they got through the entire front page uh, except for signs but that's because the attorneys told us to sit down and one from the second page um, so they've been very very good we did a bunch of them earlier this year in april this is the second batch of that and it will conclude all of those uh, the public hearing tonight if you guys are comfortable you can forward it to the township board and the township board has two public hearings if they like it, they can adopt it, uh, publish it, and then it becomes effective. They can also send it back to you if they want any corrections or changes in it. So what we're looking at tonight, the quick version is um, 
a, it touches a bunch of different areas. Uh, some of it is clarifying things that can stick into required setbacks. So the zoning ordinance starts by saying that here's the minimum setback, and then it says, but these things can stick into it. Uh, we clarified some of those. We added some things that we thought were useful, um, including uh, residential barrier-free ramps. Um, so if you need a ramp to get into your house, it's often hard to meet the setbacks and, and it's hard to qualify for variance, so we addressed that. Uh, we addressed some really tricky language about uh, single-family houses in the finished four elevation that has not been enforced. Um, at least through the zoning, it's been enforced through uh, the township's um, soil erosion and grading stuff to manage stormwater runoff. Also roofing materials, your current zoning ordinance does not allow you to do standing sea metal roofs. People like those, so we thought it was time to update that. Um, we've added some language about uh, posting addresses, some language about residential driveway accessibility. At the Township Board's direction, we've removed the requirement to include street trees and site condominiums, commonly known as the subdivisions. Um, they can still put them in, but they're not required to with these changes. We have completed the commercial plan unit development article, which is generally parallel in structure and substance with the residential plan unit development article. And we've established a plan unit development committee back in the administrative section. All right. So you have a couple of things. You've got the, the report there you're looking at. You also have the text with the changes in there. Um, let me know if you have preference for what you'd like to look at. Um, Zach, you know, while, while Pete's here, maybe we should just go in and reference some of the driveways, uh, you know, on what we did for the standards under the right. 8.12. That's up pretty quick here. That's coming up. Yep. Okay, then we'll wait. So first, everyone know that the, the index or the, the table of contents will be updated. That's not in here because we don't know how the pages are going to fall, but that just happens automatically. Yeah. For the Article 3 changes, um, and if you've got the, the hard copy here, you've got it on your stuff. This starts on page 321. Uh, we added some language for patios and terraces that extend into setbacks just to reduce the bulk, make sure it doesn't become an issue. Uh, we have added some of the architectural features that can extend into there. Uh, roof overhang, box windows, bay windows, garden windows, air conditioning unit, window air conditioning units, the fireplace bump outs, um, but we've also established that they have to be at least five feet from the side lot line. We've added Bilco doors as being able to extend into the required setback. Uh, and then the residential barrier free ramps with a couple of conditions to them. And then there are a couple of other minor changes just for language in that article. The other thing in section 3.8 is right now residential driveway standards are in the residential building stuff. Uh, we have instead, for structural reasons, taken it from there and put it back in Article 8 so that they're all kind of in one place. But the, the residential standard says go look at the driveway section so people don't get surprised by it later on. Next up, the, the couple of new things we've added are related to addressing. Some of this language already exists in building code uh, because most people don't in the township don't look at building code because it's even more dense than the zoning ordinance. We thought it would be good to include it in here. Um, and also some language about making sure that driveways are accessible. And we had the chief help review that and participate it. Did you want to add anything? No, I'm good from the last workshop meeting that you guys had and everything. I thought we all right so there you go um, that's on page 823 where this starts so basically the driveway or the address posting is just make sure that everyone has addresses when they they start doing permits or they do certain things uh, all the standards in there how high it is how far it's back that's ties pretty similar to what building code says um, so making sure that if there's a reason for first responders to have to find a place they can find it as quickly as possible for the residential driveways, uh, the setbacks don't change at all. The width of them don't change at all. This is stuff in uh, section 812, uh, A and B now. 
Uh, we that has gone back and forth a bit in the past, but it's it's here just in one place. The new language that we have added is related to making sure that they're accessible. So if you put it in a new driveway, we want to make sure if it's more than 300 feet that fire apparatus can drive on it without sinking down and getting stuck. We want to make sure if you got bridges or culverts that it's it can support apparatus without sinking in and collapsing it. We've added some basic language about clear vision zones. Uh, turn around, again, if it's more than 300 feet. I'm on page 829 now. I'm trying, I'm looking. Yep, you're, working, you're getting there. Um, so if it's a certain distance, we want to make sure there's some turnaround so that big trucks can get back from it. And then we have some conditions that the attorney recommended. Um, if you've got a non-conforming driveway of certain triggers that would make you bring it into compliance. All right, any questions on the driveway stuff? I know it well enough, but I'm looking for it. But that, I was trying You're to almost there. It. You're almost I was there. I'm trying to bring it up to the screen. So I, I don't she have any questions. You a big, big package there. 434 pages. I only got 51 here. I'm missing out. You got the condensed version? Yeah. I guess I'm cheap like that. That's okay. Um, I don't have any questions in regards to it. All right. I thought I had the right page on and I don't. In Article 12. Where are you starting off now? Sir? Yep. 12. We're in Article 12 now. So the Article 12 is for site plans. <clears throat> the changes in that are related to um, the new commercial plan unit developments. So we've added language in to say if you're doing one of these commercial mixed-use planning developments, you have to do a site plan, and we've got a little box of extra information you need to do on your site plan if you're doing one of these projects. So just basic housekeeping stuff for there. In Article 13, as I mentioned, we removed the requirement to have street trees in uh, site condominiums. They can still put them in, but it's not required in here, and if it's part of a PUD, a residential PUD, <coughs> there's language in that article that says you have to design it so that trees could be planted. Even if you don't plant it, we want to make sure there's space and, and not wires buried right underneath where the trees would go. Just a couple hundred more pages to go. Hang on, I'm just uh, <laughs> playing the games here. Now I'm in site condominiums. Okay. Article 13, I mean, we're still in 12, right? Yep. I'll just back up a little bit. Well, you're there. Mm -hmm. You're there. I just covered 13. Right here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Yep. So, there you go. That's Second the street tree section that's been removed. Yep. Right here. Yeah, that all got stripped. Um, in Article 14, this is on page 14-2. Hang on, I know where that one is. This is the residential plan unit development article. This is what you guys put in, in spring or early summer. All of the changes in here are to be consistent with changes that the attorney recommended for the commercial plan unit development article, just so that they're, they remain consistent. So the previous attorneys reviewed the previous one and the new attorneys reviewed the new one and they had a little different take on some things. So this is just all changes to make them consistent. All right. That's all the excitement in Article 14. The big meats and potatoes comes in a new Article 14A commercial planning and developments. I think I found it. Yep, that's a lot of red. Don't be afraid of all the red. Um, so before the spring, you had one article for all plan unit developments, and it was kind of awkward because it tried to do commercial and mixed use in with residential, and it, it is kind of awkward. So we've split them apart. Um, the structure generally follows what the residential one was. There are a little bit of differences here and there. Um, the big takeaways are the planning commission is the approving authority. The township board gets to do a development agreement and the PUD committee would look at minor revisions to it that mirror what uh, administrative site plans are. So little things don't rise to this body. Uh, we have a couple of qualifying conditions that have been identified. 
uh, and we've identified recognizable and substantial benefits. They need to do three of those eight, so we're not forcing them to do whichever one, so whatever they think they can do best. They need to improve traffic and access, uh, have a better quality design, one person has to control the thing, and it has to be contiguous. Those are all things from your, your residential. Um, and I want to stress again that when I first looked at this and we had discussions on it previously, it's important for these people to know that it is only the three out of the eight. Yep. I mean, you could have more. We could. But, but we're talking minimum. We, so for qualification, so everybody understands how that works, that's why I kind of just kind of held the eight right there. Mm -hmm. That way people can take a minute to look at that and understand what we're talking about. And the idea is that we wanted to identify some specific things instead of kind of just a fuzzy thing where the developers don't know and you guys don't know. Right. But we didn't want to make it so painful that no one would want to do this. We, we kind of wanted to encourage folks to try to do these types of things. Um, some general provisions. These can be in any commercial office, industrial, or public, quasi-public zoning district. Uh, so lots of places. You don't have to use this in those zoning districts. It's an optional thing. Um, if you do it, the base zoning districts would apply unless you change it as part of your PUD approval. Um, on to the next page, this is a kind of exciting thing, and I know there are a lot of folks out in the, the community with property who are interested in this one. So the permitted uses, there's a potential for a lot of mixing. Now, you'll see there, so if you wanted to do a commercial PUD in a C1 local commercial district, you could potentially do all of the uses permitted uses in the C1 district, the C2 district, the office district, the I1, the light industrial district, and the recreation district. Um, so there's a lot more flexibility in what you can do. Now that doesn't mean you get to do all of those because when you look at the review criteria, if someone wants to do industrial use that just doesn't fit, you can say no. It's going to be a challenge for the area, but this provides the option for it. Um, you can see there the other uses, so there's a lot of mixing. We tried to match the intensity as best as we, we saw fit. The other exciting thing is if you turn to the next page, folks are able to do residential uses within these. Now, they still have to be primarily commercial in nature, but if you wanted to do a three-story building with commercial on the bottom floor and then residential the second and third floor, this is a tool to do that. Or if you've got a site uh, like South of Meyer and you wanted to have commercial in the front and some residential in the back, you could use this tool as well. So it's a little tricky. It says commercial planned unit developments, but it's really commercial and mixed use. Um, so there's a lot of potential for residential in there. For design standards, because they get some flexibility, we do uh, intend for them to do a little better design than they could just walk in the door with and do by right. Um, so the whole thing, we want it to make sense. If it's near the village of Oxford, we want it to be consistent with the village of Oxford. Um, the architectural design, how the site is oriented, so less of a suburban, more of a, a small village urban design. Uh, we want utilities buried, we want mechanical equipment hidden. The access and circulation and non-motorized circulation is consistent with the residential PUD. Um, natural features, we want them to try to preserve them. If there's some historic structure that you guys determine is historic, you can say we want you to incorporate that into the design. We have some architectural design standards, and these are kind of above and beyond what you can just walk in the door and do. Taller buildings, it helps to find the space a bit better. Uh, better facade design. Uh, windows, want to have kind of more obvious and impressive entrances. Um, we tried to do some flexibility so we didn't say you have to do all of these things. In most cases we said try to do three of them or four of them or whatever the case may be. We wanted higher quality materials. Uh, folks can't use EIFS. Um, for those of you not familiar that's the fake stucco that they put on Taco Bells in the 90s that if you look at it wrong it starts to rot. Um, so if you're, you can still use it, just not if you're going to do a commercial plan unit development. Um, certain stuff for roofs we want, want to make you do so that it, it looks a little bit better. And then we expect a little higher quality parking. So either do the minimum parking or parked, banked parking or shared parking or have it on the side or the rear. And again, there's flexibility where we say here are a bunch of things that will make parking better, do at least two of them. 
Uh, we allow them to do it in phases uh, for modification of standards. So that's a real nice part for PUDs that if the setback <laughs> says it has to be 35 feet or 50 feet, as part of a PUD they can say, we need to be a bit closer to the road or the side lot line or change this thing or that thing. So their ability for them to modify uh, and this section is just like the one in the residential planning unit development, uh, where there are criteria that you look to. If there's another section of the ordinance that says this is how to modify it, it defaults to that first. And then we want to make sure that it's documented and it would have the same effect as if it were the zoning ordinance standards. The application process and review process is the same as the residential planning unit development article as is the amendment article. So I won't touch on that right now, but if anyone has questions, please let me know. And then in article 16, we've added a new planned unit development committee section here. Part of the review from the attorney is, she said, you guys to talk about this planned unit development committee and where, where does that thing exist? So there has been one of these committees. It has pre previously been um, populated with members of the township board. Remember the township board used to be the approving authority. The attorney wanted us to clarify and document that this is what the committee is so that we put it here. Um, we are putting three folks on there, at least two from the planning commission. So make sure you don't miss that first election and it's actually township board appointing it. So I guess make sure you're happy with them. Um, one of them can be a member of the township board and pretty basic stuff. They have to keep minutes. All three of them need to vote, but they're again limited to just minor amendments of, um, approved planned unit developments, both residential and commercial mixed use. The last thing that we have that's not in your packet because we're still compiling it is the history appendix. <coughs> So this is something that we added this past spring. If you look in the back of your hard copy, it basically says on amendment 67A.023, this was the date it was adopted, this is the date it was published, this is the date it was effective, and here are the articles we changed, and here's a quick summary of what we did. Uh, right now, the ORC folks can tell you how thick the stack is that you have to research through to try to see that. Um, so we did a bunch of them uh, last version of the text amendment. We didn't have time to get through all of them. We got the remaining stack, except for maybe the first four from uh, Clerk Wright, and we're compiling those, and that will be in the version that gets to the township board. And that's all I've got. I was pretty close to 15 minutes. You did good. I mean, we covered, there's actually a lot of material in there that we can talk about, and hopefully people got a chance to, I mean, this was a big packet. It took me several times at home to kind of, I walked away from it once and then came back, and then walked away from it and came back. Because there's, I took a lot of notes, but there's everything from yard encroachments and architectural features and all the driveway features and standards are all in there. there we think we did pretty good, Pete, on that. Uh, actually, I, I shouldn't be talking right now. This is a public hearing. Yeah, well, so that's where I don't I'm know going. that I've seen anyone yet from the public. Uh, do you have any Thank questions you. or do you want to open it up to the public more? No, let's, let's open it up for okay. public first. That's what we're supposed to do. Is there anyone here from the public that would like to speak in regards to uh, the information that was just delivered this evening? While well, seeing none, we're supposed to close the... Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we close the public hearing. 1222 2022 20, at 723. I'll second that. I have a motion from Mr. Knoll to close the public hearing and seconded by uh, Mr. Ballard. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, and then I guess we don't have any questions at this time. So then we're going to go to. Uh, wait a minute. Well, then I would, I would think that if we want to uh, have a motion on this, Mr. Evening. Chairman, I have a motion. Oh, Mr. Turner, go ahead. Okay. I'd like to make the following motion that the Oxford Township Planning Commission recommend 
the following approval to the Oxford Township Zoning Board of Trustees. Oh, wait a minute. They're, they're not the Zoning Board. It would have to be oh, a, I'm sorry. a recommendation to the Township. It is to the Township <laughs> Board. Okay. Okay. This includes Article 12, which is the site plan, Article 13, the condominium regulations, Article 14, residential plan unit development, Article 14A, commercial plan unit development, Article 16, administration and enforcement, and the Appendix A history. Second. Okay, I have a motion on the floor for uh, the recommended approval of the amendments to the following sections of the Township Zoning Ordinance to the Oxford Township Board of Trustees by Mr. Turner and seconded by Mr. Noel. Now, we can have discussion on this before we vote. If there's anybody that would like to discuss at this time, I just want to make sure everybody's clear with what we talked about tonight. And what we're doing is making this recommendation to the Township Board. Now, if we're going to uh, take this to the board, which is what we're suggesting, then the board would then have to receive it and then act on it. And if they act on it, uh, it will do first reading. And then it would go have to go back for second reading, depending on what the discussion is at the township board level. So we've done our part to get it to that point. And then it, uh, if it gets kicked back at some point in time, it would be through the township board to make that decision back to us. And Susan, if there's anybody else that has discussion on this motion, please speak now. Susan, I'd like a, a roll call vote on this motion. Okay. Bailey? Yes. Noel? Yes. Ballard? Yes. Turner? Yes. Berger? Yes. Motion passed. And uh, Mr. Michelle, thank you so much for getting up and giving us all that tonight. Because there was a lot more in there, really, that we could have talked about. But it was brief enough, I think, to get all the understanding out that what we're trying to put together to the township board. You did a good job. I appreciate it. Um, okay, now that's, that concludes our public hearing. We have no unfinished business. We have no new business. We have communications from any committee reports, economic development committee. I don't see anybody that I know is even here tonight from that committee, is there? There's no one sitting here on that, so that's not going to happen. Now, we had the Ordinance Review Committee meeting today, and you can discuss what we're talking about for future if you want to, because that's kind of like where we're headed right now. Yep, so Ordinance Review Committee is, is working on 2023 priority list. Pretty, they're pretty happy with um, the draft that they had. We decided not to bring it to you guys tonight because of storm adventures and, and last minute nature of it. Uh, but the idea is that at your January 12th meeting, you'll get that um, priority list to recommend to the Township Board for funding. Um, and actually, my brain is fried right now. I can't remember what was on there. Um, well, we had uh, several instances to talk about different issues, but um, there's several things left to look at and review. And one of them, we put signage in there. Sign is at the top. Uh, obviously at the top. And then from that, we broke down to some other issues. Most of the other things are, are relatively small um, compared to what you've done this year. Signs will be the biggest one. Um, it's it's pretty ambitious, maybe not as ambitious as this last year, but because you guys have been so busy, your zoning ordinance isn't a pretty good place right now. Well, when we did all of those different zoning district classifications and uses allowed, that was a major undertaking okay. that hadn't been done for a long time. And that was a, a thing that I thought we did really well from the uh, ORC. And then to separate and create um, the ORC took and made the individual with 14A to give us the uh, non-residential component of a PUD. So now we have the non-residential PUD and technically for commercial, industrial, et cetera. And then we have the residential PUD to make it more simplified and someone comes forward to meet the criteria to do that. I think it's a benefit for the township, it's a benefit for the quality of life in the township to get a nice agreement between the petitioner and the township to make that PED happen. And so we, I think we were very successful in what we got done this year. Thank you for that. You've done a lot. Oh, you may not know it, but you've done a lot of work towards your master plan oh, with absolutely. what you've done this past year and, and the year before. Yeah. And uh, I do want to give a shout to the ORC folks. Um, 
they've met 18 times this year. 18 times. Um, your well, it's process. Been a busy year. It's it's been a busy year, um, and but because of the time that they've put in to ask questions and turn things over and ask, well, what about this? What about that? The product that you guys get is very high quality. Um, also, the process that we started doing a couple years ago, where it gets to the attorney and the other agencies, including the fire chief and the engineer, before it gets to you, so we can make tweaks. That means you guys get very high quality stuff, and so. Even before you sit down, it's been polished and looked at. So, um, kudos to you guys for investing the time to get that process down well. Thank you. Uh, while you're up there, do you have any comments from the <coughs> planner tonight that you'd like to make under 13? Uh, yep. The good news is that the legislature went home very, very early. Their lame duck was like a day and a half or something like that. So, there have been no changes to the law for short term rentals or mineral extractions. You guys are going to start the year pretty quick on January 12th. You've got the Taco Bell final site plan coming before you and the Meyer site plan amendment. They're taking a chunk of the property out and they finally got the stuff together to work on that. On your second meeting, you have scheduled or will have scheduled a public hearing for a zoning map amendment. This is for you guys on Market Street there. So there are the two <coughs> properties on the north and south side of, of Market Street. Um, that have been C1 light or local commercial since the beginning of the last millennium or since the end of last millennium. Um, it's been a challenge to get commercial in there. There is uh, a company that's coming in to request it be changed to multiple family. Their interest is doing something similar to what's on Stony Lake Drive with attached duplexes or triplexes in there. Um, so the process would be they come in, ask you guys for a zoning map amendment, and you make a recommendation to the township board, and then they can work, act on it or not. Um, so that's what all the activity is out there. Um, they are. My understanding is they're not doing as a conditional zoning map amendment, so it'll just be straight up residential. If it's approved, then they could do any of the the commercial or the multiple family residential uses in there and meet the the standards. They could also come in and do a a beauty if they wanted to. Uh, but if you've been out there, they've been busy beavers. They have been doing geotechnical work to find out what soils are. Um, but that's not really related to the, the zoning map amendment. That's just related to their due diligence of potentially purchasing the property. And that's all that I've got. Thank you. Now, did, this, did you pick up on what he was talking about a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Not approved. Well, okay, sorry. <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna, I don't think Mr. Sharp has anything for comment tonight, he's not here. So the next is adjournment of this meeting, so I appreciate everyone coming tonight. If there's